Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. You'll never guess what, but it's odd job time again. Let's get started on them. First things first, with the pandemic and everything, uh, we haven't really been able to go and vend at swap meets because, well, there isn't any. So we've got our utility trailer here full of good used stuff to send to the auction. Um, that'll be all going in an upcoming tool auction, and we'll see if we can get, uh, you know, something back out of this stuff. Next job we got to do is scrap out this old neon. Um, it used to be my brother's. It's been kicking around here for years. Um, time for it to go. I had a plan to make a bone stock race car out of this. And it just never worked out. It was never going to happen. So, you know what? We'll grab a few parts off of it that we can use. And uh, take her to the shredder. Anyway, you can see we're kind of well along on the process here. It's not so bad when you don't have to, to put them together. You just saw your way into the engine. They come out a lot easier. And quite frankly, when I've got the big um, race car box on the front of my trailer, I don't like too much scrap car underneath there because when I get to the junkyard, they have to lift it up with the loader to get it out. So uh, this way it'll be sawed off at the firewall and it'll all be behind the box so they can just lift it straight off to, to take it away. Anyway, that's how the plan is supposed to go down. We'll see if that's how it really works out. So I've just gone ahead and taken the struts and the knuckles out of it. Um, I'm going to start working on the, the engine here. I just got to get underneath and take that one bracket off so I can get the inspection cover off. Get the torque converter bolts out. I'll drain the oil and tranny oil while I'm down there. And then we can just pluck it out and it'll be ready to separate. Then we're going to drop the subframe out of it. Then we'll uh, we'll finish sawing it off here. Then we'll get it up onto the trailer. And once it's up on the trailer, I'll lift the back of it up and get the back suspension parts out of it. And we'll go from there. Okie dokie, we got the Kubota power on the caper here. Got all the motor mounts undone. It's The engine is literally hanging from the tractor. I just have to back it out and lift it up a tiny bit. I've got a couple more bolts to take out in there and I can get the power steering pump off and uh, leave it behind and we can get the engine out of this car. Well, I think that's everything we're gonna find out. Now to get this thing out, I have to lower it down and pull it straight back. So let's see what happens here. See, that gets, that gets it out of the mounts. Lift her up a hair, maybe. There we go. Now the axles are coming with it, too. I gotta make sure they don't get caught on the control arms and such. Let's go have a look. Uh, yeah, don't see anything on this side. Let me get that shifter cable out of the road over there. Yeah, it's not attached to anything, is it? Okay, we're free. We can get this thing out of here. Yeah, da dee da da dee da. Scrappy, scrappy, scrappy. There she is. One neon power plant extricated. I've had the engine out of this car before. Um, like I said, this was my brother's car and it, 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 uh, the head gasket went on it. And at the time, for basically for what it was gonna cost to fix his engine that had 150K on it, or 160 I think at the time, um, we were able to find this engine. It only had 80,000 kilometers on it. That's like 50,000 miles in a, in a wrecking yard not too far away. I think he got it for 300 bucks. So all we did was put a, a, a timing belt kit in it, you know, water pump and idler and everything like that. And uh, this engine ran great. And then what happened, I don't know if we didn't tighten it or whatever, on these neons, 
the second gen, they've got the big bracket here with those two uh, dog bone mounts that, that keep the engine from, from twisting in the car. And you can see here, all the bolts broke. And the engine started flopping around like, uh, like uh, you know, like a fish in a boat. And uh, around the same time, he got lucky and found a really good deal on a, a couple of years old Avenger. And he bought that, and he loves that car. He's driving her to this day. So that all worked out in the end, didn't it? We've got the, the steering column, brake booster, and all that stuff undone. So now, uh, four bolts, and we can drop the K-frame down. Well, there isn't too much left of this poor thing now, so I'm going to get it on the ground. And then we'll, uh, I think I'm going to just balance it on the dolly. And drag it up to the scrap metal place that way. Well, there's that job done. Got it nicely balanced on there. So Trusty Rusty can haul it up to the scrap yard. Um, I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So we'll uh, take it Friday. Well, unless it's not raining tomorrow, then I'll take it tomorrow. Because uh, I really don't want to look at it. Now i got to clean up the mess in my garage. Oh, there we go. Garage all cleaned up. Race car back in. On to the next job. Now I gotta fix this thing. It's the hanger for my wheelbarrow. It's it, it screwed to the side of my shed. And while well, I went by and hit it with the tractor or something in it, it's all twisted and broken. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, put it in the vise, straighten it out, weld this piece back on. I can tell by the hunk of wire there that I've already welded it up once before. But uh, we'll get her fixed up. Ah, here we are. We got our bracket uh, all welded back up and straightened out and screwed back to the wall and oh I know that brick isn't supposed to be there. I'll put it away after. There. Always oh, something around here. Okay, so you just pull up to there, you hook it in, you stand it up, ta-da! And the wheelbarrow just hangs there. Awesome. Now we're going to see if this phone we bought at the auction works. I'm only interested in it because I think it has speaker. And I wouldn't mind speaker as a function. So there, and it's plugged in. That goes in there. This came in a load of stuff we got at the auction. Imagine that. Totally, completely dead. Hang on, maybe there's another place to plug in the line, eh? Yeah. So I guess we're back to our old phone. It works fine, it just doesn't have speaker. And this one had a, had a hold button. I would love to be able to put people on hold. Like, like, not my mother though, I'd never put my mother on hold. But anybody else, I would put them on hold. And now we got this fan. I can't remember if I got this at the auction and a load of other stuff. I don't know where this even came from, but let's see. Does it work? Well, uh, I think it's got a stripped gear or something. You can hear the motor running and... Oh dear, this may not be something we can fix. Let's see here. There's not usually a lot to these things. Oh, there we go. Well, we got it running good now. I just, uh, it was making horrible noises and kind of running in fits and starts. I uh, shot some oil in it and it seems to be happy now. So we'll put the cover back on and then I'll, uh, I'll bring it in the house and I'll clean it all up. Well, that's it. Another load of odd jobs done. Um, it'll probably be full again tomorrow, but we could start all over and make another video about it. Anyway, uh, thanks for following along. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.